Today's episode is sponsored by one of my favorite rap labels, Front Row Regal. Started by my good friend Rock City Mark, legendary rapper Ito, and Jay Rios, they are the go-to for real hip-hop. Make sure to check out the whole team, including DJ Duop, Jay Black, Nice to Future, Boo Boo the Prince, Reno RX, and Uop Diggs. Follow Front Row Regal on all platforms and check out the new New York by Ito and DJ Duop out now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, got my seltzers. Thank you for doing this, man. It's cool. It was funny. I was looking back, like listening to your music in preparation. And I, I had like a bunch of your songs that I didn't even realize were your songs that I were listening to. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's, Literally, that's I, like, it was like, and then it was like, oh, fuck. Like, I love how the worlds all connect like that. Yep. I call it the full circle energy, man. It's just everything is full circle. If it's meant and it's in that circle, it always come back around. That's how I look at it. Yeah, and every time I don't want that to be the case, it always ends up being the case, and I'm like, why did I even test the system? Mm-hmm, yep. The whole, the whole thing that we're in, from music to this personal life in general, is a full circle. All this shit is going to happen again and again and again and again and again, especially the things that are positive and energy and meant. Do you get scared by the order, or does it bring you comfort? Um, well, well, I'm aware that it happened, so I guess I'm kind of com- comfortable with it. With it, so um, I'm, I like to prepare myself so I won't be surprised when things come back full circle. Just like like this with you, like um, it was crazy. I saw a real bad man do something. You followed me, but but the day before that, um, I was telling um, I was telling the homie Sin, I was like, "Yo, I'm coming out there. Won't you hit up Sam?" But you were doing the shit with Bad Man. You ended up following me, and I hit up Sam. I said, "Yo, did you hit him up?" He was like, "Nah." I said, "That must have been Bad Man." Then I said, "Full circle." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then we the met in person, around. and the the energy was there. Yeah, facts. Good energy. I, I uh. About the order thing, it's like I do enjoy it, but I hate that things aren't tangible because it's hard to explain non-tangible things to people that need that. Yeah. Like belief in yourself, belief in your art, like trying to explain that to people before you start. But everything is, is, is everything is a practice. So if you practice on making things tangible and, and like being able to explain your art so a person can actually touch it and reach it. Everything is possible. I, I believe um, in, in the Batman record, I have a line. I was like, it can be built if it can be imagined. So if, if, if it's, um if it's, if it's there with you, then you should be able to explain it. And if you're not, then practice, practice yeah. makes perfect. Because I remember being like a kid when you first get the idea of what you want to do. Like, really, you know, like when you got the, like, do you remember the first time you got the idea of where you are right now in music? Yep. Yep. What was that? I had to be like 13, 14. Um, You know, on this journey, I've had, had trials and tribulations, ups and downs. And you get deterred and negative energy forces you to do certain things that you don't want to do in order to make something work. But I always knew because I had a a supportive system around me that ensured that I knew that where I am right now is going to happen as long as I stay on the road. So it had to be like 12 or 13 once I started really understanding how things work. I think around that age, that's when people really start figuring things out. So around that age is when I was like, yeah, I knew eventually that I would get here as long as I trim some of the fat, whether that be people or energy, and just keep it moving. You know what I mean? 
Was there? A, I hope that makes sense. It does. Was there a moment yeah, that you became aware? Well, man, aware of where I am right now, like of like today. Aware that you are on a path and that you found that path. I was kind of forced on the path, but but it wasn't like a a bad force. Like, um, long story short, my mom's is an artist and uh, she sings. My dad's a DJ. My grandmother is, is a singer. You know what I'm saying? So my mom, when she found out that I really wanted to take music serious, she started giving me the things that she didn't have. So I was kind of like, pushed on that path where it could almost be easy almost but it wasn't easy because sometimes even though my moms would try to make up for what she didn't have it might have been too much and I might have been pushing back you know what I mean type yeah. of situation but I was kind of like born into that because of the history of music that I come from and if if my mom had the same support that I have now with the team that I'm around and and the family members that decide to help, I believe she would be bigger than what she is. You know what I'm saying? So I was kind of like, just here's the path right here. I'm gonna make sure your ass walk down. Did you push away from that path in the beginning? I tried to, but it was it was it was in the bloodline, um, and 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 that and that looked like. Me playing basketball, you know what I mean, trying to trying to focus on that or diving into street shit, ignorant shit, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Try, it's, it's all about growing up and, and going through these experiences and just learning who you are. And I could never escape me wanting to be an MC, you know what I'm saying? Like, or mm -hmm. do something with music because I used to sing first. And, and you know what I'm saying? So, like, it was, it was inevitable, bro. I... I even though I tried to veer away from it, what will Al Pacino say on Godfather? It pulls me back in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. That's, yeah. Do you think you have will or do you think people have will over that choices or do you think we're kind of all born into the path we're going to end up living? Nah, everybody has choices. Um, it's just... Everybody has choices. You can choose whether you want to walk down that path or not. But if it's laid there for you and you've had um and you and you can get information from people that tried to walk that path and they have their trials and tribulations, they can give you gain that um and, and, and make you see things that you probably couldn't see and they can see it from afar because they been through it and they're sitting back watching you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Why go against the grain? You know what I mean? Like if it's not you know, I, I have some friends, some some um, acquaintances where it's just like this guy. He this guy was born into being a uh, he, he's a rich he's a he's a rich homie of mine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, he um, well, let me not say rich. He's well off. Um, his family is well off. They've done real good for themselves over the years. But he'd rather be a street cat. You know what I'm saying? Instead of the the what I may see as a blessing, he don't see it like that. You know what I'm saying? It, it's cool. I'm like, yo, you get this. You get this when you want this. You get this when you want this. Bro, why are you over here? You know what I mean? I don't want to be over here. Why you want to be over here? And it, and, and that's just something that 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 particular person is, 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 he battles with that shit. That's a battle. So you have choices. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I've seen people make opposite choices. Yeah, it's like you are on a path, but you can push yourself away from that path. Like as that, like what we were talking about in the beginning, you can kind of like, yeah. there's an order to it, and the universe wants you to probably do well. That's what I'm hoping, Yeah, that the universe wants yeah. you to do well. But the more yeah. you push away from it, the farther you can get from that. No, nah, no, nah, that's, that's true. That's why it's a it's that it's a must that we as as the people focus on my elevation and meaning focusing on self and knowing self and doing what's best for self because if if you do what's best for self you can then do what's 
you could do good and be a better person for those around you and surrounding you and that and that shit can become contagious and and that next person can do the same thing and then it just keeps the village thriving and going because Everybody knows themselves and hold themselves accountable and make the, the, the correct choices because there's a right and wrong, believe it or not. You know what I'm saying? And and as long as people and as long as people can can really hone in on who they are and what they're meant to be, they can't fight against that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you I, I believe if you don't really know who you are, you're not comfortable with who you are or you may have some certain trauma, you know what I mean, that that hinders you from learning who you are, and then you have to deal with that. Like I've experienced trauma that has, that has um, pushed me off my path before. You know what I'm saying, and yeah. and I've had to work my way back into it. You know what I'm saying, but I know what kind of person I am. I don't like being defeated by anything, especially fucking trauma. You know what I'm saying. So I know that about myself. So I'm like, okay, let me take this little breather. Let me be vulnerable. Let me get all this shit out. But then I got to hop back to it. And whatever process that I have to do to get back to it, that's what I'm going to do. You know what I'm saying? And if if more people could operate like that, I feel like a lot of the shit that's going on in the world wouldn't be happening. I was talking to a friend about like living in the past and how, you know, like when you live in the past and you let that shit sit with you, it will hold you and hinder you from the present and the future. And my friend was like, well, isn't that trauma? And it's funny you said that because it is because I don't think you think of trauma as nostalgia, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like if you can control a situation, you had no control over it. You think it's giving you safety, but that's not what it's doing. Yeah, it's a clutch. Yeah, it's it's, 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 it's not it's not safety, but for some reason we're wired to think that type of reaction or action is safety, and I haven't been able to figure out. Why? Because, I mean, I've, I've been through stuff like that where I thought something I know for a fact was trauma, was safety, and it wasn't that at all. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Do you think... My bad, we, man. Do, no, I was... Sorry to get all deep right in the beginning of the no, podcast. No, 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 no. But I, now I'm, I am interested in this because for so long, like, I was partying just to, like, have fun. But I realized that was like keeping me from doing my art, like creating, Mm -hmm. like I would do anything Mm -hmm. but the one thing I wanted to do just because it was so scary to fail or or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what I meant about like taking yourself seriously is when you were like, no, I can't waste any time. I have to like be on my path. And I think everyone has to make that choice for themselves at some point. Yeah, and and, and I, a lot of people should start making those choices. I judge a lot of people should start making those choices, and, the cho- and those choices will be beneficial when you're young because that's when most of the trauma starts. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. But in order to prepare, in order to be prepared for something like that, the people that are teaching you and guiding you and the village that are, that's around you have to have that knowledge of self. You, you know what I'm saying? Because everything is passed down. You feel me? But it all starts at infancy. You know what I mean? So you said 13 is when you, you know, you realized that this was the path you were on. But was there a moment when you had to take yourself seriously when you found knowledge? that question one more time was there a moment that you had to take yourself seriously and you did find knowledge was there a moment um i can't pinpoint a moment but finding knowledge is is a serious thing in itself you know what i'm saying and so it's just like Trying to think of an example of a moment. 
Nah, I mean, I've I've always taken myself serious because again, I've I've this was the path that was given to me by by those before me. You know what I mean? It, it was passed down. So I've always been serious. Um that's what that's what I'm saying, Sam. I had I had somebody forcing me to take it serious. Yeah. You, you get what I'm saying? It was it was almost like I couldn't. And when I did not take it serious, there was heated moments between my mom and I and those and the people who were supporting me. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I was always taught that this is what you want to do. You can't fuck around with it. You know what I'm saying? And I've lost friends during this process because I had to, like, distance myself from their personal movements and the music they were making. You know what I'm saying? It, it, I had to be like, okay, I have to surround myself around the people who understand my vision and who really want to support my vision and actually see it for what it is and want to go on the ride, regardless if they're um, following blindly at the beginning, because we all follow blindly at, at one point. You know what I'm saying? When they start, you know what I'm saying? Like my team, my team, I'll, I'll ask them, did you know that we were going to be where we are right now? And, and some of them say, hell no, but I like the vision. You, you get what I'm saying? And so I, because I was, because I was taught to be serious about my art and myself and, and the, and the procedures and the process of, of it, I'm able to display that and, speak that to others where they can believe it and follow it. You get what I'm saying? And so, um, yeah, man, I've always been serious about it. I can't think of a moment. I can't think of moments, but it was quick moments, and then I have to snap right back into it. You get what I mean? I do. So it might be 10 minutes. Yeah. Like 10 minutes, and then it's just like, all right, stop bullshitting. And yeah, thank you, know you for letting me push that subject. Yeah. You know, thank you for letting me nah, let nah, you on yo. it. Yo. Uh, Nah, nah, I love these conversations. Are you happy? Like, are you happy you're on this path? Are you happy that you were forced on this path? Do you, are you, you don't think about that or? I'm excited. I'm thankful. I'm grateful. It's, it's a beautiful journey. And um, just recently, I can be honest about this. Just recently, I found out what I was here to do. I always knew it was music. But I didn't know what it was. I, I didn't know what kind of music I was supposed to be making, basically. You, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and I'm just now figuring out my place in this, where I can make my mark and, and, and do some great shit and help people out on the journey. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, man, I, I'm happy about it, bro. That's the only thing I can do. Like I get the, yeah, it's it's a beautiful thing getting DMs where people are saying, "Yo, this song got me through this." I'm like, "Oh shit, I'm doing what I'm meant to do." Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All my everybody around me, they flocked to me for some reason, and I and I and I didn't know what it was what it was when I was younger. You know what I'm saying? Um, because I was like, "Yo, shit, I flock to them." You you know what I'm saying? But you'll see yourself kind of stand out when like decisions have to be made and everybody's just like, all right, yo, we're just going to do what, what he said. Not like we just going to say, we're going to follow him. Like they, my dogs or something like shit like that. It's just like, yo, let's just do that. Shit. Let's just do, let's just go that route. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. And you start and you start looking at yourself. Like maybe I have a responsibility. So, now you have a responsibility. You can't take that shit lightly. So you can't blindly lead. You can't just do dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? So, man, this it's a beautiful responsibility. I'm happy I'm on the path. Um, shouts out to my family for being music heads and music folks. Because, yeah. you know what I'm saying? This I feel like this is what I was put here to do. What is the type of music you're supposed to be making? I like, I like, um, so my thing is I like to attack generational trauma. <laughs> uh, whether that be through anger, whether that be through meditation, whether that be through violence. Um, 
I'm a complex human being. There's, um, I'm not schizophrenic or anything like that, but there's multiple sides of me as I'm sure there's multiple sides of you and how you operate. And, um, it's, it's preaching, but not preaching almost. It's almost, you you I'm, I'm able to make myself, I'm able to, somebody described me and they were like right on the, yo, it was on point. They was like, yo, it's like Luca is like a, uh, um, a guy just like taking these pieces and like moving them around and tell these different stories and give people different ways that they can connect. I like to take the things that I've saw, that I've seen throughout my life and the things that I've learned throughout my life, the things that I've experienced personally and things of that nature and the shit that my moms, my dad, other people around me have been through. And I like to make stories and have a person like Sam be able to connect to it, whether he's white or black. Me, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And and I found I found a way to do it with these last four projects that I put out, which is why all of my my albums are basically attached to each other. Uh, it'll be a big reveal one day and it'll just be I'll be like, hey, you're really supposed to listen to it like this, because it's literally telling a story. Even though I'm doing this album with real bad man. Um, it's a separate entity. It's a collab album. I wrote it, and I and I'm gonna present it as if it's connected to everything that's not part of this specific thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you'll be able to listen to it in chronological order. How did the real so, bad man? How did you guys connect? Man, he reached out, man, and um, he reached out, gave me gave me the rundown of what he wanted to do, um. I sat on it for a while. I had to think about if I really wanted to do it because I'm one of those type of people I like to um, stay within my circle. I'm super comfortable with my circle. And, I feel, and you know, some people say you have to collab outside the circle to make things work. And I, I don't believe that. I think me and my circle can make shit happen. You, you know what I'm saying? But um, I had the circle telling me, nah, man, step out. You know what I mean? It, do something different. Woo, woo, woo. So I'm like, all right, cool. And um, yeah, it's been dope since then. It's been up since then. And what made your energies connect? Man, I, I, um, Cities of Eve and I, we had a show in LA. And um, Real Bad Man was just, um, we were talking about Real Bad Man like that past week, that, that whole week before I got there. And I hit up Adam. I was like, yo, Adam, I'm in LA. Let's link. So we linked, we ate tacos, man. We had this fucking crazy, weird ass story on why we couldn't get weed in LA. It made no fucking sense. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we were getting, trying to get shit delivered. It wasn't working out. Me and him, we just tripping. He, you know what I'm saying? And, um, um, he, he had these crazy like books way um he, he was like yo he gets inspiration from the they're like i was going through books while he was playing beats and uh, some of those beats that he were playing that he was playing are going to be on his album and um i remember looking at this specific art book and i was like damn okay this is what this album was about to be about you know what i'm saying so it was kind of like you know it's, it's different talking to a person on facetime and zoom Versus actually getting the link with them in person, you yeah. know what I mean. We sh we're we're not going into depth about of our live of, of our personal lives, but we're we're throwing little, you know what I'm saying. Dart said it like, "Yo, yeah, my wife does this," you know what I'm saying, type mm -hmm. of situation. So we were just able to connect differently in person. So that's that's what sparked that. <clears throat> that's beautiful. And how long have you been working on the project? Maybe. Four months now, four or five months maybe. It's yeah, cool like, seeing um, how excited he is about it too. Like here, I hope oh, people, yeah. this is coming out after that one, so people go back and okay. listen to him because he's working with like some legends too, and it, the excitement of your project is <laughs> yeah. like, he seems more excited about your project than some others that I would be <laughs> on and off I, camera. He told I, me about. 
Nah, man, it's it's I I did something I feel is special with this project. Um, it's a it's a it's a story project. Uh, the entire album is literally a story. It's in order. Everything happens in its correct order, and um, I just do some different shit. Like I, I bring, I, I show, I display my my singing abilities a little bit. Oh, you're back, um, you're back in the your singing bag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I I display some of the melodies a little bit. Um, I um, it's just a it's just a beautiful story, man. I like, can't wait it's, to hear it's that. A, it's, it's it's going to be crazy man the whole thing is going to be crazy and i really like hearing how you describe like you finding your voice finally and what it is because one that's what an artist wants but two that's something that's important and that you want to teach with it i'm not when i say this next thing i hope you know i'm not comparing you to this artist because that's not what i'm trying to do but i was with thousand words yesterday and we were listening to Ka and I never really listened to Ka much and I thousand was like kind of explaining to me what his style was and it was about like teaching about trauma and teaching about like that you that so I just, what were you saying no what were you saying well I, I just got on Ka recently um language arts like language arts or something like that yeah that was uh-huh. but yeah. I but I knew about him. I knew about him because he did something for Jizza. I'm a big Jizza fan. Oh, are and, you? And he he had yeah he had a verse on on, on Jizza's second album, and um, it's crazy because I was I was peeping some of the shit he was saying. I was like, damn, I can really relate. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yo, um, nah, man, that that's a person that um I would want to work with, Adam. Adam mentioned that and um it didn't resonate because I'm like, who is Kai? Then I'm like, oh yeah, this cat, yo, this cat is ill. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, well, I we, like Kai. We met at the uh officially at the Rock Marcy show. And it's fun. Rock Marcy knows how to pick a goddamn good artist. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, if you go back Thanks. to features, you're like, Kaz on this, early Stove God's on this. Mm-hmm. Like, even not like Knowledge the Pirate killed his shit. Yeah, I fuck with Knowledge the Pirate. I really fuck with that 211 cast. Oh, yeah, that is West that, Coast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is that, is that is that Rock's artist too? No, he, he with, 11, uh, he's hey. with he's with Doe. You know, it's like the TF, Jay Worthy, just kind of that Doe oh, okay. West Coast. Okay. West Coast. Okay. He was fired. Yeah. And actually, I did an episode with him and Doe Networks in the green room of that uh, venue. Okay. Hell yeah. I'm going to have to check that out. Now, I fuck with Doe. He, he was, I, no, Knowledge the Pirate is just like one of those cats you like. Well, yeah, we know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's an ill cat. He been ill. <laughs> so you hey, know the uh, time's up on our Zoom, so I'm going to end this and I'm going to send you, hopefully it'll work when I send you the Zoom link. All right, bet. Because we're having a good convo. I don't want to, like, fuck it up and wait for that. So I'm going to end this and right. I'll send you the new link. Oh, perfect. And just like that, we can start again. There was there was a little bit of yeah. computer trouble, but we're back. Oh, yeah. I'm going to change subjects completely to are you a conspiracy theory guy? Mm, nah. Nah? No. Nah, I got to have concrete shit. Yeah. I'm, I'm one of those cats that I hate believe and I rather know. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's that's kind of like why I'm like distant from religions because I can't see the shit that you 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 giving to me. I feel what you're giving to me. It sounds beautiful. It's wonderful, and I feel like people should take some of those lessons and apply them to life for sure. But if I can't see it or like I, it's not right here, and I can't find it, I, nah. I'm not. I'm a, I got his head concrete and like no. You know what I mean? Yeah. I I agree with that, but in my mind it's a hard like 
argument for me to then having the blind faith in myself that it's going to work out with like creating. Nah. So what do you mean when you, when you say create? Of course, I know what creating is, and I know it. I know what realm we're in, but dig deeper into like your story behind that. Give me an example of what you mean. I was a type of kid that felt lost. Like okay. I didn't fit in. I didn't know what my purpose was. Uh, shit wasn't good outside of home or in home. I was just kind of lost. But I believed that someday I would find something that gave me purpose and gave me fulfillment. And when I found comedy, like stand-up comedy, I realized that was the thing. But when you find something, that doesn't really mean that you're going to be successful in it. And you also don't know what path you're going to be. But see, there's multiple ways of, 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 of achieving success. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be rich. Um, you're going to be able to live off of it. You might just be happy and be able to go to a job you really don't want to do because you have this art. You, you know what I'm saying? Um, I know I'm, I know older people who just enjoy doing their art and they might not be successful in a Jay-Z way or let's say, uh, let me get another part. Um, maybe like a, a Vince Staples way. You know what I mean? Like, um, but they're happy though because they're still able to get up, get out the bed and do their art. No doubt they want to make money and be able to, live off of it and feed their children off of it. But when you become aware of your actual path and where it stops and you and you be and you become okay with that, the earlier you do that, the better off you'll be. And I feel like those people that I'm uh, the specific people I'm talking about, they they knew that hey, this is probably where this ends for me. You know what I'm saying, but I can yeah. still do this, and they're and they're they're beyond contempt. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I'm trying to really I'm think content. about. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm just I'm really thinking about what you're saying because I I enjoy everything, 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 but I don't know if I'll ever be happy, and I feel mm. like that's the thing that keeps me pushing. No so matter. is it is it is it that or have you ever asked yourself have you found a thing that actually makes you happy yet? I or have found a thing. To- I have found a thing that makes me happy, but I think the thing that'll make me happy is not knowing what happens afterwards. Like, I want to do everything I can to help as many. Like, when I was lost as a kid and I listened to the first podcast that made me feel like there were other people or saw the first stand-up that made me see that there were other people that thought like me, I want to do that for other people, even if it doesn't bring me happiness, because that will bring me happiness, the not knowing how it affects other people. It's, I guess it's just different strokes. You know what I mean? Like, like I'm, I'm okay with. I can't, I'm, I'm kind of at a point where once I'm at my peak of this, I already know what it's gonna look like afterwards. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of not like worried about what's, what is gonna, what's gonna happen after I achieve the goal or. Um, I'm at the the stopping point of trying to achieve the bigger goal. I know I've I've already been planning it out. So you you know what I'm saying? Like, I know, like, okay, if this doesn't work around this time, what what am I going to do? I'm already planning that. You you know what I'm saying? And Mm -hmm. I'm already planning. I'm also planning 
what happens if I achieve the bigger goal. And some of the stuff I plan out might not happen, but at least I have a blueprint that I can, you know what I mean, look at and, like, continue to work on that. I mean, everybody gets deterred when when on the path, you know what I'm saying? But as long as you carved out that path, and and you and you're expecting and you and sometimes may know what's what's on that path, yo, you can be prepared for what's gonna happen afterwards. That's kind of I'm not I'm not perfect, you know, perfect, but like I like to be proactive mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So I so I won't be traumatized, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah because something didn't work out. You know what I mean? Like I don't wanna be I don't want shit to excite me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or surprise me. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, I knew this was a possibility. You know what I mean? But even if I didn't know that this was a possibility, I was prepared because I already knew that I was trying to go this route and this. You, you know, it's just, you got to think, I'm a big chess player. So I like to think steps ahead. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if that's making sense. Sam. No, it is. It is. Uh, how did you get oh, into you right. said you're a big chess player? Yeah, I love chess. Hell yeah. And you mentioned meditation <laughs> before. Yeah. Yep. I'm into that too. You're into getting your mind right. Hell yeah. I got two kids. You know what I'm saying? Two, two black boys. A four-year-old and a one-year-old. Congratulations. I didn't have what they... Thank you. I didn't have what they have. You know what I'm saying? Um, so in order for me to lead them and 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 guide them down the crazy path that they're gonna go down just because they're black. You know what I'm saying? Um I'll just be leaving them out to 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 get ran over by something. So I gotta get my mind right. You know what I mean? Me and my wife, we we focus on higher learning because we know we got to pass that down. We're, we're, we're aware of traumas um, because certain traumas were passed down to us and it wasn't intentional. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, it, it, it just happens. You know what I'm saying? Our parents weren't like, here, take this fucking trauma. But they didn't have the means or the ways to deal with certain things. Yeah. So now we're the... Uh, speaking of my wife and I, and a few of our friends and um, and um, other family members were aware of that shit. You know what I'm saying? And my wife keeps me on my toes. I keep her on hard toes because at the end of the day, yeah, in order, f- I, yeah, we're living for them. But in order to live for them, we got to live for us. And how that looks is like we have to be healthy, and we have to continue to learn because we got to pass that shit down and make sure they're prepared. And so when they have their kids, they were taught ways, taught things, and now they can keep teaching it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's just how you start breaking those chains. So I'm just in the business of breaking chains, man. How did you, how do you <laughs> um how do you keep a successful relationship while being a creative? She's she's in she's in my creative world. Um, it, crazy story. Uh, um, I was I opened up for Raekwon. Um, he he came to Memphis, and I got to chill with his brother Kareem before the show and shit like that. I ain't went up to the tail. We in there smoking blunts and shit. I mean, I, I had the wife come up there and shit like that. So Kareem was like, "Yo, play your hardest shit," and I was like. All right, I'm gonna play my favorite. The whole time she like, nah, you need to play this. You need to play this. So I played my joint. Kareem was like, yeah, that's that's tight. And then I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna play the joint she say play. And he went crazy. He was like, you should have played that one first. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like little shit like that. Like she, she's she's been um uh, she's been a part of it. Like she saw it like. She wasn't there when I was a child, of course, but like she she was there when I started like performing locally, like when it started to, you know what I'm saying, blossom a little bit. So she's in it. So that's I feel like that's how 
how that works. And she's super duper supportive and understanding. You know what I'm saying? She fuck around like, yeah, I take care of the business and shit like that. But sometimes because I'm so creative, it's like having another fucking kid in the house sometimes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But she's 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 aware of it. You know what I'm saying? And 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 I ain't a trifling motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like it's just yeah, it just works, man. It's perfect. Shout out to her, bro. She gonna get all the roses. <laughs> I appreciate you bringing her up first because I do think that's something that uh, people don't realize is important and is something that's forgotten about. And I don't think a lot of people realize that's where their trauma comes from is not being in a, mm -hmm. a happy home. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I was happy because, yo, my mom did what she did. Me and my mom, we had beautiful times. We had more beautiful times than we had ugly times. You know what I'm saying? And like, she made shit shake, but the only time the sadness and the anger would overpower or outdo my happiness is when I wasn't inside that house. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. So I had a lot of, you know what I'm saying? I mean, the regular story pops one around. I'm in the hood. You got to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Moms can't teach you everything. She She's a woman. She... She's seen she's seen things, but you know what I mean. Like certain shit is different coming from a man than um, coming from your dad than coming from your mom. Like your dad telling you some like pull your pants up shit. You probably a mind that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like my mom tell me pull up my pants. I I I we go back and forth about it. You, you know what I'm saying? So like um, and that's just that's just the natural mother-son dynamic anyway. That's why it's important for the father to be there so they can balance that shit. You know what I mean? I fought my mom on a lot of shit, but she would send me to that wolf. I love my pops now, but at the time, it was a wolf to me. And, like, I, I would always feel like a sheep to him, and, and I ain't like that. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like, she'll send me to him. Like, crazy story. I didn't want to cut my fro. I was like, Mom, you not touching my fro. You ain't doing it. Nah, nah, nah. Send me to my pops, man. I, I crumbled up. You know what I'm saying? The fro came off. He, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, I, it, it's, it, that's why, like, I feel like that situation would have went different if they were both in the house. I could have made them both understand, like, yo, this is my identity. I hear it. This is part of my identity. I hear why you're making me cut my fro off because I'm already a big black boy. I dress the way I dress. I don't need that extra attention. That was their thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need cornrows. You're already a target. I'm like, man, I don't give a fuck about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is who I am. I like my cornrows and shit. So, you know what I'm saying? If, if they were in the same house, that come, yo, let me know when I'm talking too much too, fam. No, nah, I'm enjoying so, all of this. Trust uh, me, this is beautiful. Okay, Thank okay. you. Uh, no doubt. So, like, if they were in the household together, I feel like the conversation would have been different, and I and 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 we would have met at a a, a medium. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We we probably would have met at a common ground, but different type of shits going on in different homes. You know what I mean? Power structures and shit like that. So it's just like, you know what I mean? Like, they just go, and and, and I'm going to make, I'm going to come back to the circle where you were like, people, um, the trauma starts from not having a happy home. But when I was in that home, when I was actually in the home, the trauma didn't, didn't affect me. It only affected me when I stepped off the porch and I had to become something that I, that was the opposite of the home just to survive. You know what I'm saying? Does that make I sense? I do. It uh, it does make sense. And before so, it's funny that you were saying it's not funny. That's not what I mean. But you were saying your voice was like preaching, but you didn't like that. You didn't like that word when you said it. But I feel like now hearing it, it's like parenting. Like that's what you want to do. Through the music? Like that's your voice is like the parenting or the 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 voice of reason that you needed. Yeah, you can say that. I don't. I don't want to say 
prepare it because some of my rhymes might be misleading, but that's that's how I feel and that's what I've been through. That's what I've seen. So I don't want to be a parent. I don't want that responsibility. The responsibility that I do want is being the person. I want to be your favorite public speaker. You, you know what I mean? That's what I would rather be looked at, looked as, looked at as, as a public speaker. The person you like, yo, when he says something, it resonates with you, and you can relate. And even if you can't relate. You can see because of how he paints the picture, you can see it. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just want to like be like, I, I said in a, another interview that when you're doing what we're doing as far as the art form goes, in, in some form and fashion, you're the Malcolm X and Martin Luther King of the generation. You, you know what I'm saying? Because of there, there are no, there are no more, there are that many. Malcolm X is and and I mean yeah you got Farrakhan you know what I'm saying you got him but that's not a lot you know what I'm saying like it once was back in those days so now you have the music you know what I'm saying you really got to be tapped in and really know what's going on as far as like how the movement is still moving if that makes sense you got to really be tapped in but if you're not tapped in the only thing you have is music yeah, and you get all your knowledge from music. You get more knowledge from music than you get from movies. And in movies, you're actually seeing the shit be done. You know what I'm saying? So and, yeah, I just we're public speakers. You know what I'm saying? Like I just want to be labeled as your favorite public speaker. You know what I'm saying? And you can every time you come to me, you get something from it. You can take something away from it. The message has to be hidden in the 21st century in a capitalist <laughs> America, and the message has to be hidden behind something. Mm-hmm. I um, and I hope I'm. I feel bad with the comparison because I'm not comparing it at all. But I'm saying in the way of learning, how I learned through comedy and how I learned through it is like people are just joking, so it can be taken as a joke. It can be taken as like, mm-hmm. or it can be taken as just a song. It can, but if you really like know and you really listen, then that's there's something deeper behind that. Every time, especially the goat, the goat comedians. You know, I mean, Bernie Mac was making fun of his trauma the entire fucking time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And um, and 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 Bernie Mac wasn't a punchline cat. He was a storyteller. You know what I'm saying? And because he lived it, he understood what it was. He was able to convey it in a way that when you hear about it, you can laugh at that shit and you might have gone through the same thing. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I want to be like that. I want to be that type of cat. You know what I'm saying? Does it take an emotional toll on you to create? Hell yeah, Each project is a different feeling for me. You know what I'm saying? And it takes me a while to, like, come out of that project even after I'm done. You know what I mean? I'm not one of those cats. Like, I don't have quantity. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I for sure put my all and everything and love and soul into the one project that I'm going to, you know what I'm saying, release at the time. You know what I'm saying? So. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. Man, quick story. Um, this album probably won't come out until fucking 2024 just because of the path that I've taken and shit keeps popping up. You know what I mean? But um remember this album, As the Birds Fly Low. It was a, it's an album about my entire life. <laughs> um, my entire childhood. And I and I talk about the traumas and things of that nature. And um Raw Extractions, I had to t- I had to take a break from that album because it was so fucking emotional. I sent some of the rough drafts to my pop. My pop ain't no crying type of cat. But, you know what I mean? Like, I was telling his high school story on that joint. You know what I mean? And, like, it literally started from when they met in high school, me being in my mom's stomach as a sperm cell, all that. I tell the whole 
fucking like story and it's vivid and he was emotional about it. So was mom's. So, you know what I'm saying? I was super emotional about that shit. So I had to really come, I had to like come out of it. You know what I'm saying? So that's where, that's when War Extraction was born because I had to come out of that album because it was bringing up a lot of shit. It wasn't like I was afraid to attack it. I was enjoying attacking it, but that shit became draining. I started feeling it in my body. You know what I'm saying? So I was just like, yo, I, I got to step back from this. Let me let me go murder some niggas on some tracks real quick. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. but yeah, man, hell yeah. It's an emotional roller coaster with this art. <clears throat> Do you feel fulfillment when it's done or do you feel fulfillment of the grind? Always when it's done. Um, the grind is fun. It's, it's cool. It's just tiring. You, you don't really get a lot of rest. You know what I mean? But that is what it is. But I get fulfillment when it's released and, and people are enjoying it. And, and those who hate it, that's dope too, cause it's like, I I don't know, like when I see the shit, like when people like have their judgments and opinions about the album, and I might not agree with it, I still think that's dope. That I made it safe enough for you, where you can express your opinion about the art. So my shit is working. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's it's just you know what I mean. It's just. Yeah, when it's done and it's in other people's hands, man, that's when I'm like, yo, I can move on a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And the real so, bad man project's your next one? Yeah, yep. Who do that's you have on one. that? Right now I have Cities of V, of course. I got the Stooky Bros. Uh, we, we locked in the Billy Woods thing. And um, try and get one more. But I'll keep that on the hush. Billy I didn't really want a lot of crazy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you like sticking with I your camp, want... as you said. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's not even just that. It's kind of hard reaching out the features when you have a whole fucking storyline to an album. And mm-hmm. you got to reach out to that artist and be like, all right, yo, I need you to rap like this. Like, I had to send a paragraph, two paragraphs to, to Real Bad Man. And and be like, yo, send this to him too, because this is what I no, nah, I didn't want to do that the whole time. Because I needed him to come from I needed every feature to come from a standpoint. Like there's a song on the album called the Ama. Um it's AMA is um the artist, the merchant, and the architect. And you know what I'm saying? And I got Stooky Bros playing the artist and the merchant, and I play the architect. So it's it's kind of that thing. And and my camp, I can just call them and be like, "Little bro, I need you to rap about this, rap about that," <laughs> versus having to having to reach out to somebody I don't know, yeah, and explain that shit to them. So, how did the yeah. Boldy feature come together? Man, shout out to D Jack, man, one of the shout illest. out D Jack. Yeah, yo, yo, that dude's genuine, man. Shout out to that brother, man. And um, yeah, man, we just reached out. It was that simple. D Jack was uh. uh a dope human being during the whole process, man. Accountable, 100, everything. You know what I'm saying? And he's been following my my journey since then, bro. So, like, he's, he's a real, real good individual, bro. So, through D-Jack and my people reaching out through D-Jack, that's how it happened. That's beautiful. I love yeah. D-Jack. I wasn't sure because of the connection of Real Bad Man. Sonically, all you guys yeah. got together. It's, it's yeah. like creating yeah. a sound that you didn't even know was there, you know? Thanks. Exactly. Yeah, man. But, yo, D-Jack, that's one of the dopest managers I've ever, like, had a conversation with. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, he was honest during the whole joint. You know what I'm saying? And Need more managers like that guy. That's dope, you know him. Yeah, no, Jack has <laughs> so, done. Yeah. He's he's an amazing dude, and I, I'm happy yeah. that you're giving him flowers too because he deserves it. Yeah, yeah, 
He's now yeah, managing like a metal band. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw that shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to see them. Just like, what's going on? Because yeah. I know I'll fuck yeah. with them if D Jack fucks with them, but it's just like yeah, type shit. <laughs> Hell yeah, thanks, yeah, man. Yeah, I love that when people are genuine. Like, I've Hell said this yeah. on the podcast before, but it's like when people say, like, never meet your heroes. It's like, damn, well, pick better heroes. Like, I want to meet people I look up to that are good people, and I hope people who look up to me in the future think of me as a good person because I always want to give off good energy. I never want to be like – and sometimes people might come up to me and I'm in a bad mood, but that's not who – you know? Yeah, I mean, you're human, man. All of, all of our heroes are human at the end of the day. So if, if I ever met one of my heroes and the first greeting didn't go that well, I wouldn't, like, charge it to him. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with him. He's a fucking star. You know what I'm saying? Like, you read about stars being depressed, really. You know what I mean? That person might be depressed and – tired of people approaching them and things of that nature. You know what I mean? It'll be different if we're in a like private setting. Yeah. And we're like able to chop it up and things of that nature. But if it's like I heard like some of the biggest stars, I won't name drop of course, like people met them on on Hollywood Boulevard or whatever or wherever the fuck they were and like they were rude as shit. You know what I mean? And I'm just like so, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Keep they move, yeah, like, keep yeah, it moving. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. But yeah. there's a, yeah, no, I feel you. <laughs> yeah. Man, thank nah, you for so doing you. this. I, I, really do, I really do appreciate you coming on. No doubt, man. Hell yeah, I'm enjoying it too. We covered a lot of different topics on, <laughs> on this one. Yeah, yeah. And we barely talked uh, about yeah. music. It always comes to the end. And I'm like, damn, I didn't, I didn't ask any of the music questions. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, the music speaks for itself, man. So it does, and that's I mean? why I hope people yeah. listen to that. I'm not. I just want to find. Yeah. I want Pete to showcase people as they are, and man, I really enjoyed this conversation. Right. So thank you so much. No doubt, fam. Thank you, brother. Last yeah. thing, how how do you and Sin know each other? Man, Sin is the entire reason I'm in New York like how I am, man. Like, shout out I, I how he said he heard. Shout out Cinematic. Nah, hey, yo, another genuine human being. Man. Just got the like, SD Knack v cover. Crazy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's super <laughs> crazy. Super genuine, talented, stand-up guy you know what i'm saying like um shout out to sin man for real but nah sin said i i think i think he said he heard he clicked on me because he said i was from memphis and i think i popped up and 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 like a body type thing i don't know what happened but he was like yo this he from memphis and then he started like digging deeper into memphis and he was like nah he can't be from memphis <laughs> so anyway he hit me up through IG, man, and, yo, he invited me. He was like, he invited me up to New York. He was like, yo, whenever you up here, hit me up, bro. We going to wait. Woo, woo. And the first time, I mean, I've been to New York multiple times prior to this, but never on, like, hip-hop and business or, like, linking with other artists. But first time I went up there on that, man, I got invited to a cypher. I'm mean, like a, 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 not a cypher, a studio session, a jam session. It was, um... Emilio, shout out to Emilio, another genuine Emilio. guy. Yeah, uh, motherfucking Blast. He was in there, 89. He was in that joint, uh, Place Diamonds, Rav. Um, am I missing somebody? Ox. Ox was in that joint. And so. All crazy, you know, all was, incredible, was, yeah. All incredible MC. So, like, that was a dope moment saying, invited me to that and. I got to come up to the place, you know what I'm saying, where I felt I needed the blessing. I needed the blessing to spit, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got to display my talent among the the Mecca, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, shout out to Sam for making that happen, for sure, for sure. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you for telling me. I'm yeah. glad I asked about that. But anyway, uh, when does the project drop with Real Bad Man? Hopefully midsummer, so it's just like maybe 
late June, early July. Cool. That's not mid summer. That's early summer. It's so <laughs> summer. Yeah. Summer time. Summer time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, and when, nah, it's gonna can... be a crazy one, man. Yeah, I cannot wait to hear that. I cannot wait to hear that. And uh, where can people find your stuff? Uh, just follow me on everything. My name is B-I-G-L-U-K-A-H, Big Luca. Or you can just type in Luca and it'll pop up. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, yeah. thank so, you yeah, so much in. again. Nah, thank you, man. Be peaceful, man. Hell yeah, yeah, of course. Have a good rest of your day. <laughs> <laughs> you too, fam. All right, peace. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah,